What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel Zaynomics Gaming. Today I'm going to review the Far Future Sniper Rifle as well as go over some of the news in the Destiny 2 TWAB. Majority of the news that I go over I feel is the most important. I'm not going to get into like every little detail and read out all the paragraphs from the TWAB. If you want to check out the TWAB for this week, go on Bungie.net and it will be on there for today. So as far as the Far Future Sniper Rifle goes, my role currently, I have extended barrel, accurized rounds, quick draw, and I have frenzy. Now, I feel like I almost have the god roll except for frenzy. Frenzy is an interesting perk. I like it if you're in PvE. It does work inside of PvP, but you will have to have a lot of ammo and you will basically have to be just no scoping everybody for, for you to even get it to proc. So. Frenzy basically states, being in combat for an extended time increases damage, handling, and reload for this weapon until you are out of combat. Like I said, you really gotta have a lot of ammo and you have to be in combat. So for you to get this perk to proc inside of the Crucible or anything like that, you will have to be in combat for about 12 seconds to get it to work. Now, on this weapon, the main, the, for the last column, the main perk that you're gonna want if you're a PVP enthusiast, you're gonna want opening shot. So that's basically the God roll. You're either gonna want extended barrel or hammered forge rifling, accurized rounds definitely for the range. Then you're gonna either want quick draw, moving target, and opening shot. Now this weapon does roll with thresh, demolitionist, wellspring, multi-kill clip, and then frenzy like I stated before. Now, as far as PVE goes, I feel like you're gonna be looking for fluted barrel, tactical mag to increase the mag size just a little bit. And you're gonna to wanna to either run surplus, auto loading holster, or lead from gold. I personally recommend either auto loading holster or surplus, but that's just my personal preference. Of course, auto loading holster gives you, you don't have to worry about reloading, but in a sense, this weapon still has a decent reload speed anyway, so you're not really hurting too much from it. Now, as far as that last column, like I said, it has Wellspring, Demolitionist, Thresh, Multi-Kill Clip, Opening Shot, and Frenzy. And for that last trait combination, I would either want Demolitionist for PvE or probably Thresh. Multi-Kill Clip, I don't, I don't really use sniper rifles for just popping off ads, so I don't find it useful. Um, you might as well just use Frenzy if, if that's the case, because while you're in combat, you increase damage. So. You know, with multi-kill clip, you got to get kills, reload, then get more kills. So, like I said, for PvE, you're going to be looking for fluted barrel, tactical mag, lead from gold, auto-loading holster, or surplus in that third column. And then for the final column, you're either going to want demolitionist or frenzy. That's my personal preference. Now, as far as the curated go roll goes, the curated roll is arrowhead break. Acurize Rounds, Surplus, and Wellspring. And those two perk, combina uh, perk combinations, they work pretty good together as well. But there are better roles inside of this weapon. Now, I like this weapon way better than Frozen Orbit, Eye of Soul, um, Bite of the Fox. This sniper just feels so good. And it is an adaptive frame, so you get 90 rounds per minute. Now, I was still shooting people out of their supers. In the clips, or in the background gameplay, you'll see where I shoot out a Thunder Crash, um, a Stasis Revenant Hunter. I think I shoot out, if I remember correctly, I think I end up killing a Spectral Blades Hunter. So, yeah, this weapon works really good. And if you watch my previous video on Threaded Needle, the sights and everything are just about the same. It has like that same color and variation. I love the circular pattern, whereas Frozen Orbit, has more of a boxy scope. So you do get a wider line of sight with the Frozen Orbit and I think Bite of the Fox, if I remember correctly, because they have a little bit more wider scope when you're trying to like actually shoot the weapon. So you can see more, but I like the more of the circular line of sight because then I feel like I'm just aiming in on my target. This weapon feels so sticky. The aim assist is at 62, just like the threaded needle. So both of the weapons feel very similar, even though the threaded needle is a power weapon and far future is an actual sniper rifle. Now, 
I will compare Far Future highly against Beloved. Um, I don't really care for Adored because it's kind of like Beloved. And, you know, I don't really like that remake of weapons or that rehash of weapons. This sniper rifle just feels so good. It's just so different than the others, in my opinion. I really, I'm not really into the Icolo sniper. So I haven't even made a video on that. I don't even like shooting or using the weapon. I mean, it's okay, but it's not my style. Now, as far as a masterwork goes, of course, you're gonna want range. You're gonna wanna get as much range as you can. And like I said, this is an adaptive frame, so it has a good grip and it feels really stable. The weapon is very consistent. Even if I only get body shots, you can quickly change to like Sturm or if you have a quick draw steady hand and just get the body shot off. Now, in the background gameplay, I have clips of Iron Banner, regular Crucible, as well as some competitive gameplay that you guys can check out. And this will more than likely be my main sniper rifle from here on out, especially since sunsetting is gone, all of that is no more. So I can really hang on to this weapon for a long time. And it looks beautiful. It just works really well. And like I said, I don't have to worry about sunsetting. So um shifting gears we're going to move towards pve and the destiny twab news now if you haven't noticed or you don't know the fallen saber strike is giving double loot and starting tomorrow at reset it will give out four times the loot if you get platinum champions like well the platinum triumph i guess you could say if you kill all the champions inside of the strike you will get a platinum reward and you will get four times the loot if you do so so make sure you're playing on legend at least knock out all the champions take your time and get that quadruple loot um that's only a limited time thing so make sure you definitely do that as far as the loadout goes you're going to want to run like bite of the fox for your kinetic anti-barrier snipers and on top of that you're going to want to run risk runner as far as the um, power weapon goes you can really run anything that you want um, obviously you can't use an exotic because you're using risk runner um, you do not have to worry about solar in this strike you're only gonna have to worry about anti-barrier and overloads all the shields are either void i think there's only two or three voids and everything else is arc and when you're using risk runner you'll have the opportunity to keep that um, conductor superconductor perk going because there's so much electricity inside of that strike now by far the quickest way to get through the strike is running two warlocks with the well of radiance and a titan with your uh i can't even say the name the euro furiosa gauntlets you can just block spam spam the heavy damage keep getting your super back and you guys will get through the boss pretty quickly the strike is not like devil's lair at all devil's lair had so many more enemies as far as like hordes of enemies as far as I can remember, the Fallen Saber has not changed at all. Nothing is different about it. There's no special enemies that we currently have from Beyond Light inside of um, the Fallen Saber strike. So definitely get yourself a fire team together. Get that quadruple loot starting tomorrow. Make sure you kill all the champions. You got to kill all the champions. Now, I know I said Far Future was my baby as far as the sniper rifle goes, and I absolutely love the weapon. But unfortunately, I wouldn't use that for this weekend strike because it's just not as efficient compared to running a kinetic sniper with anti-barrier and risk runner for your overload. So that would be my loadout if you're trying to progress through it very quickly. Obviously, you could use the uh, multi-max CCX as your submachine gun or escape velocity and then use far future. But like I said, far future is a solar sniper and there is no solar shields. And if you wanted to go that route, you could use a Dord instead. And as you all know, a Dord is a arc weapon. So you'll be able to take care of those arc shields. Now, my personal opinion, if you did decide to go that route and use a kinetic submachine gun and a Dord, I would use Anarchy for the boss, but you don't need to use Anarchy. I think personally, you should just use a kinetic sniper, wrist runner, and then use um, whatever power weapon that you feel comfortable using it's really not that hard it's definitely not the most difficult strike that um, bungie has released as far as uh grandmaster and master content goes you know the corrupted strike is always the worst for me i have fun playing fallen saber it's pretty cool but i'm gonna say most of my grinding for tomorrow and i think you all should too 
I want to thank you all for coming and watching today. If you can, please leave me a like, a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Oh, but real quick before I go, I wanted to let you guys know that Trials is canceled indefinitely until Bungie finds a workaround with the win trading situation that happened last weekend. I almost forgot to tell you guys that. Um, as far as the TWAP goes, that's all of the main news this week. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for coming and watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys in the next video.